so first things first, Melanie, how are you? I'm good, actually. I'm good. It's a big old week. It's my release week. So nice. it's super busy and uh, I'm really exciting. It seems to be doing really well. I've had lovely reviews and the fans have, have you know, given me great reactions. So, yeah, all is good. And especially uh, bringing out new music in, in kind of these weird times so, and, and leading up to this in the last couple of years. What does that mean to you to be able to release new music now? I actually feel so lucky that I was able to be inspired for this album in 2019, which was probably one of the best years of my life. Okay. Being back on stage with the Spice Girls and touring the world with Sink the Pink, doing lots of Pride events. It was so exciting. I was I was doing my favorite thing, which is performing. And it really inspired me to make a very positive record. I wanted it to be empowering. I wanted it to be very dance inspired pop. And I got it all ready, ready to release it. And then 2020 hit, <laughs> which is like <laughs> the worst year ever. Right. But I think that it's positive in that. I've given, you know, it's an opportunity for me to distract people and entertain people and to lift people's spirits in a difficult time. So I, I feel really grateful for that. Right. Well, let's talk about 2019 then, because that's a, uh, a much better year than. Um, yeah. And you mentioned these kind of things that, uh, yeah, that, that got you in a good mindset. And I imagine it's always an ongoing process, but these uh, these little elements kind of help with with uh, where you are mentally. So, especially with things where you had mixed feelings about in the past, what was it like revisiting those things, like the Spice Girls, and um, and kind of getting a fresh start at it, almost in a way? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was so important to me. It was. It was quite daunting at first. I did have concerns. Obviously, my time with the Spice Girls was incredible, but there was also some difficulties I experienced during those times. So, yeah, to go back into that environment made me environment made me feel a little bit nervous. But I've always been a person to really try and face my fears and be courageous. And in doing that, it was just the most wonderful experience. And I feel like... I have made peace with so much of my past and being on stage with the girls was this moment for us all to realize the incredible impact we'd had on so many people and it made us feel really proud and it made us feel really humbled and privileged to have had the opportunity so I went into the studio with with so much you know I don't know whether it was it was confidence or I think it's probably pride more than anything and I just feel very excited and this album feels like a new chapter. I worked with lots of new collaborators, whether it be artists, songwriters, producers, remixers, and all of that gave me this new kind of fresh um, energy. Mm. And I, I, I really think you can hear that in the record. And I think it's been good for me as an artist working on my eighth album. I think it's good to really shake things up. Well, because that's one of the things where you uh, went down a more uh, electronic uh, uh, direction and especially getting people to dance, like you say, that energy and kind of uh, conveying that energy and, and tra uh, transporting that to the listener. Uh, why was that so important? I think I just wanted to... I wanted people to enjoy the wonderful things that I had experienced. Mm. You know, I love dance music. Mm. I used to do a lot of clubbing and raving okay. in my late teens, early 20s. But of course, all working in music for many, many years. And, you know, my life has changed a lot. So I don't get the opportunity to do that. But I started DJing a couple of years ago. Mm. And that reignited that passion. And, you know, just reminded me what a, a huge part of my life that has been, you know, I love music, I love to dance, and I wanted to share that with people. So that helped to influence the sound of this record as well. And, and then, uh, like I say, it's fresh start, but then, uh, for instance, a song like uh, Who Am I, which kind of um, encompasses this idea of, of uh, accepting yourself and kind of having, like, like you say, kind of looking back at the past and kind of accepting who you are and what you went through to get to where you are now. Um, yeah. How does a song like that kind of find, it way from, find its way from your mind to, to paper, so to say? 
I think what's been brilliant about this album, although I've worked with lots of new collaborators, I also had some amazing writing sessions with Biff, Richard Stannard, okay. who I've known forever. He is one of the big Spice Girl collaborators. Mm. We did songs together like Wanna Be, Spice Up Your Life, To Become One. Oh my gosh. I mean, so many of the really big hits, Mama, um, Viva Forever. So we have grown up together really and we know each other really well and I I think as a songwriter you can often be very vulnerable you know when you're really exploring very personal Mm. um things and experiences so it was good to to work with him and a song like Who I Am um I worked with Biff and a, a young songwriter called Bryn Christopher who's also an artist so to just have that balance of somebody I felt very secure and safe with Mm. and also somebody very young who has been a fan of myself and the Spice Girls for many years. So it was just this perfect combination of having, you know, the right people in the room at the time. And the mental process then, like you say, it's very personal and then there's more songs like these uh, on the record where you kind of uh, delve into yourself, but at the same time, it's very empowering. You kind of... uh, yeah, you, you feel you feel the energy coming out of those songs. So, what was that mental process like for you? And again, I, I'm sure this is a, an ongoing thing. But going from where you were um, years ago, being in a tougher mental state, to where you are now, uh, and having these songs that kind of embody that that empowerment over the years. Mm. It, you know, it's something I. I was diagnosed with depression in 2000 and I I started to talk about it probably a little bit too soon before I was ready. You know, I still wasn't fully well and I was still quite vulnerable, but it's, it's difficult. I think coming from where I came from, you know, being in the Spice Girls and living a lot of our lives through the media, um, I kind of almost felt I didn't have a choice. You know, it was, it was a weird It was a weird set of circumstances, but, you know, looking back and how helpful that's been to so many people, I'm pleased that I did it now. I think to be at this point in my life and my career and to be able to explore that creatively um, has been really healthy for me. And Mm -hmm. it's probably a much better way for me to express those feelings. And I think in many ways, you know, for the listeners, it's probably a better way to help other people. You know, I, I personally have always found strength and support through music. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of my preferred way okay. to uh, to express those feelings. Right. And when you start on a project or an album like this, and uh, especially, um, well, I think the last one was 2016. So when you start, do you... Do you is that a difficult process to get things rolling and get things kind of uh, heading towards the direction where a full album is made? Yeah, it, it's always daunting. Those first mm. writing sessions, um, you know, I don't, I can't think of a, of an album when I've gone into my very first session with an absolute, you know, clear idea of exactly okay. what I want to do. Um, I knew with um, version of me 2016, I wanted to make an electronic record. I think production wise, that's maybe a little bit more experimental than this one. Um, With this album, um, in the first writing sessions, again, I was feeling my way. And then when a song like Who I Am is written, it's the song that begins the album. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, an album, a a song will, will, will happen you know be written and then it's like right we're going now this is it we're on our path and then it's the the album just starts to tap starts to take shape so um yeah luckily that happened quite quickly with this one and when when you uh then continue like you have that first song and you go into uh the other songs well what was one or two that came immediately after were there uh, were they those the songs that uh kind of in terms of themes were aligned with uh, Who Am I or were there they the different songs? I think actually all of the songs, I mean, it, it, thematically, it was all starting to happen quite quickly. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I always draw upon personal experiences. So mm-hmm. there, there is light and shade. Obviously, a song like Nowhere to Run, which is much darker, mm-hmm. um, was one of the early sessions, as was End of Everything um, and Overload. So, yeah, it's, it, I suppose there's a theme because 
you know, personally, that's what's going on for me right now. I'm kind of acknowledging the difficulties that I have experienced and still experience from time to time, but also, you know, the empowerment and the the positivity I feel moving forward. Well, let me ask you this then, and if you don't want to get into this, that's fine. But um, in terms of kind of fame and that whole thing, uh, I mean, it doesn't get much more famous than than what you were... uh, at the time so so what is that like just to just as a normal you i mean everybody's a human being what is that like to have those two years that were just so intense yeah it's it's incredibly weird and it's really hard to get your head around i Mm. think anybody that finds himself in that situation will handle it differently nothing can prepare you for it you know what happened with the spice girls it was literally my absolute dream as a child growing up I wanted to make music I wanted to be a pop star I wanted to be famous I wanted to travel the world and it happened you know there's such a small percentage of people that get to achieve that absolute fairy tale life and it was incredible and I got to share it with four other people but along with that you 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 know you lose your privacy you miss your friends and your family. You're completely uprooted from everything that you know. We lived within a bubble. We traveled the world. We worked incredibly long hours. We were scrutinized, criticized, as well as being, you know, glorified. And, you know, there's, there's so much going on. And it, yeah, it literally, your world is turned upside down. Everybody treats you differently. Um, everybody treats everybody around you differently you know your family go through that go through it all as well you know so it's it's a lot it's intense and then it all happens and you don't really have time to think about it because you're so freaking busy you're like you're you're surviving you're in survival mode and then before you know it it stopped and then you've got to deal with what's just happened and where you're at. So it's, yeah, it's a massive head fuck. Yeah, <laughs> I, well, I can't imagine because I'm not famous, but it, it just it feels so weird or such a foreign thing. Yeah. But if, if you have, so if you look at songs and uh, again, who am I, but also here I am and those kinds of songs where you kind of went, look back at those, those, those times and kind of seeing where you arrived now. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm imagine there must have been uh, obviously there are ups and downs, but there must have times, like I said, you're not a quitter, but there must have been times where you think, well, maybe this isn't worth it to me. Um, what kept you going in those moments? I think it's the passion for what I do. And you're right. There have been times when I've questioned if I'm doing the right thing, if it's the, it's, if it's the right thing for me, you know, mm-hmm. if it's healthy for me to continue to do it. And the thought of not doing it is more petrifying than the thought of doing it sometimes you know I I love performing there's there's nothing else that I do in my life maybe apart from being a mum that gives me the pleasure that that being on stage does and I and I feel like not having the opportunity to express myself and to perform for people would leave a huge hole in my life um, so I will I will always do it. I think that's my intention to continue making music and performing to people what, on whatever level that might be. You know, I will continue to do that for the rest of my life. Right. And I did watch a bit of uh, your performance at Shepherd's Bush, uh, Bush a couple of years ago, uh, just in the research. Yeah. And I mean, the energy and the kind of feeling. Do you miss that now that we can't do that anymore? I do. I did a live stream last week, which was brilliant. It went really well. And we had, it's so, so weird because obviously I've been promoting my album throughout, you know, COVID. So all of my performances have been like in my living room, you know, to an iPhone and, you know, lots of online stuff. And I, I think I had a crew of about 15 people. And even that felt like an audience, you know, it felt like great to actually sure. have human beings in the room and, and, you know, some energy. But I do, I miss it greatly. I'm touring in April and May. Um, that's the plan. Uh, we're hoping that, that it's safe to do so. Um, but yeah, I think all performers are really missing that right now. Hmm. And you mentioned the people that you work with, and uh, another one is Nadia Rose, who you did uh, Fearless with, which is uh, one of my favorites on the on the album. Uh-huh. So, what what started that track off? Did you kind of have somebody like Nadia in mind as as the song was written? 
So the first thing that happened with Nadia is I discovered her. I saw her on a documentary about women that was on the BBC. And I was just drawn to her. She was so positive and I loved her attitude, her energy. And I started like researching her work and I love her stuff. There's a real like humor to her work mm. as well. She's a great rapper and, you know, and a great female in a very male dominated genre of music. You know, the, the grime industry in the UK is very male dominated. So it's great to see her, you know, very strong in that area. Um, I then had a chance meeting with her at an, a party where I was DJing and it just got my mind ticking over because I wanted to collaborate with a younger artist and she was just perfect. Mm. So I approached her. She'd been a Spice Girls fan growing up. So we we took a car journey together to the studio one day and we were just going to go in, see what happened, no pressure mm. whatsoever. And I've been thinking about a song I'd like to write with her. And I just thought about being a woman, being in the music industry, pursuing your dreams and how courageous you have to be to do that. So I was thinking of fearless and we both loved that mm. word. We thought it was a beautiful starting point. And that's how the, the song came about. And I, I'm so pleased that you like it because I think it's, it's quite different on the album. I think right. it's quite different for me as an artist as it is for her. And her fans will be like, oh, that's, you know, that's not what I would expect from her. So, um, yeah, we, we love it. And um, I think it's, it's quite special. Yeah, I think the atmosphere that is set in that song uh, through the music is quite good. And then obviously the message of, about being fearless. Um, and I, I don't think things like being fearless happen overnight. So so if, if we take uh, your story, then uh, what over the years have, have made you more fearless in a way? Have, have made you more confident in what you're doing? Well, you know what? I think you have to relearn to be fearless because I think as a child you are. Mm. And I know as a young person in the industry, I was, you know, so fearless. And um, maybe because you don't know all <laughs> of the consequences. But um, but then you do, you know, I think you can get bogged down with everybody else's expectations mm. as well as your own, you know. So you have to put those things aside. Um, yeah, I, I went through a lot of just searching you know soul searching who am I who do I want to be who do people expect me to be and and just trying to like trying to silence all of that expectation and just going back to that essence of who you are and who you were as a kid you know what your dreams were what your ambitions were and you know I work in an industry which is very ageist as well the mm, entertainment sure. industry especially for women they don't want to see mature women making pop music um whoever they are. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so there's, there's a new battle that, um, that I'm having to fight and, and I, and I won't be silenced, you know, I'm still ambitious. I still have dreams. I'm still the same person I was when I was 18. Mm. Um, so that's why I, I continue. Well, that's interesting then, because in terms of success, uh, again, I mean, you don't get much better than what the Spice Girls did. So, so what are kind of your, your ideas of success now having experienced that? Yeah, well, I, you know, I'd be foolish to think I, I could ever do anything as impactful as the Spice mm. Girls, you know, most people don't even get one opportunity to do that, never mind two. So, you know, my time with this girls, I, my, with the girls, I absolutely cherish. And I suppose being back on stage with them last year just gave me an opportunity to really embrace being a Spice Girl. Mm. And I see being a Spice Girl and being a solo artist, you know, they kind of go hand in hand. So although I could never expect to have the same success as a solo artist, it's all my career, you know, it's all yeah. me, you know, I'm very proud of all of it. You know, this album looks like it's probably going to be my most successful album in a very long time. So, um, so it's working, you know, <laughs> my new attitude towards, you know, not being apologetic about wanting to be successful in making music and entertaining people. Um, it seems to be working. So um, I will carry on on my crusade. Because that's, that's, that's something I hear a lot from musicians and I, I think artists in general, that as soon as they stop caring about what other people think and then just stay close to themselves, then then uh, good things start happening. So that's, that's very good to hear. Definitely, yeah. There, there's one other song uh, that I wanted to get uh, get into. You mentioned already "End of uh, Everything." And there's a um, line in it: "If if it's the end of everything, why don't I feel a thing?" I, I wonder where that line came from. 
Well, this song was inspired by a lot of changes I made in my life that really influenced my career right now. You know, I'd I'd been with the same manager for 18 years mm. and I'd always been quite fearful of change, but the opportunity came and it was the most natural thing to do. And once I'd done that, I realized it was really healthy. And I, so I changed everything. I changed mm-hmm. my, my musicians and, you know, everybody behind the scenes working on the record, my A&R, which was very important. But I, I kind of, felt you know obviously going through a change like that it's almost like a bereavement Mm. and and I and I felt numb you know I was I was petrified of change and these people not being so closely involved in my life as they had been for such a long time but actually I I didn't feel any sadness I I just felt numb and, and, and I wanted to explore that feeling because as a human I think we've all experienced that and it's a very interesting state of mind. Right. Um, so, yeah, so that's that's where End of Everything comes from. Yeah. When was the moment then? I don't know if this is a specific moment, maybe in the studio, maybe as you were writing certain songs, but where you felt, OK, these changes, it's good that I've made them. I'm, I'm, I feel confident in, in this this kind of path that I'm now going in. It was, it was from the first moment okay. the decision was made, okay. actually. And I think... You know, I've I've made some really big decisions in my life, you know, <laughs> as we all have. And and I think that the the good ones are the ones when you make them, you feel great and you have mm. no regrets. You know, then you think, yes, that was that was the right thing to do. Um, because it is hard, you know, some of these decisions, it takes a long time to, to get to the point to be ready to make them. Um so yeah, I think yeah, from immediately I started to feel the benefits of, mm. of making that leap. Okay. And finally then, um, because you said you seem to be in a very good place at the moment, uh, especially musically, creatively, uh, things with Spice Girls are, are going again. I, I even read some rumors that, that you were writing new songs, but I won't ask you about it. Um, uh, it's not true. They're just rumors. Okay. That's not uh, true. Fair enough. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> um, but is it, do you see yourself kind of uh, pushing this 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 uh, good vibe kind of forward and then continue to write as uh, in the coming months years uh, even especially now that we still have a lot of time on our hands? Yeah, I hope so. I mean, I will always just go with whatever's going on for me personally. You know, that's how I feel most inspired to write. But I'm enjoying this moment, mm. and uh, yeah, that that will be my intention. I think. There's probably quite a few more difficult months for us all to get through. So um, I'll try and keep the, the positivity up as much as I can. Excellent. And then hopefully, uh, as you said, in April, uh, you get to play live again. Yes. And, yes, uh, I hope so. All right. Melanie, thank you very much for your time. Uh, I My wish you pleasure. the best of luck with the record and I hope you have a great day. Thank you. You too. Take care. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.